Welcome to an up close and personal special edition of Care for Creatives Community Conversations. Today's conversation is happening in DC Radio Studios. Care for Creatives is a partnership between GW and the Creative Affairs Office here in DC. This program is focused on two things one, providing the community with conversations and information about mental health and creatives. And the second part is about offering the community pay what you can therapy and mental health support through the Community Counseling Services Center on the GW campus in Foggy Bottom, where we offer both in-person and video sessions for therapy. Anyone that's in need in the creative community can reach out and get therapy at a cost that will fit your budget and allow you to really make use of the service. So for today's conversation, we're going to talk about GoGo. Um, we're going to explore GoGo and the um, creative expression that it is in this city. And we're going to talk to Jata Freeman about GoGo. She is a GoGo artist. Mm -hmm. And so maybe Jata, you can, we're just meeting today for the first time. So can you tell me a little bit about you and your history with GoGo and your history in this city? Yes, so hello everyone. Um, my name is Jata. That is J apostrophe capital T, capital A. That is my government name. My mother gave that to me. Um, so that is also my stage name as well. Uh, so little about me. I started singing at the age of eight at Ebenezer United Methodist Church, which is still open. So if y'all want to come on to church, come on to church. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that is where I started. Uh, my grandfather taught me how to sing and... Mm -hmm. At the age of 15, I started singing with the Go Go Band Experience Unlimited at my church. We used to do Go Go wow. Sundays. And so that's where I kind of started practicing with the Go Go mm -hmm. vibe, Go Go scene. And when I turned 18, my mentor, Ronald Moten, actually mm -hmm. reached out to me to do a song because at the time, I had been the youth mayor for two years in a row. Um, youth mayor, wow. Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> yes, I was the youth mayor through the Marion Berry Youth Leadership Institute. Um, and so he knew me for my activism. And he had a song that he wanted to do about go-go and not muting go-go. And he wanted me to talk on the song. And oh. my mother was like, no, she is not talking. She's going to <laughs> sing. She's going to go in the studio. She's going to sing. <laughs> and nobody really knew that I could sing other than the people that came to church and members of EU. Mm -hmm. And so after doing that song, it blew up. It went viral in D.C. And that was the start of my go-go career. So now I am a go-go artist as well as an R&B artist. Mm -hmm. um, and so I do both the band thing and also the independent thing. Um, which is very trying on both ends. But, you know, I love it. I thank God for all the opportunities. Um, I thank all of my mentors. I thank my village for all of the opportunities. And so, mm -hmm. yes, I'm so excited for this conversation. Thank you all for having me. That's amazing. You have quite a background. It's yeah. it's so powerful, this link. Music is a powerful part of church. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't realize that there was kind of a connection to go-go mm -hmm. as well with kind of church music and go-go. Right. And um, so... I guess I'm wondering throughout this process, it sounds like you did also, you were the junior mayor, yes. <laughs> you, you've had a lot of other um, mm -hmm. experiences. How have you kind of, I guess, found a way to prioritize the creative part of yourself? And do you feel like there is a creative part or do you feel like mm -hmm. you're just a creative, right? It's, it's your whole, it's your whole self. Mm. I've never even thought of that. <laughs> so I'm going to answer that right here, right now. So okay. you have an exclusive. <laughs> okay, exclusive. I yes. love it. <laughs> I actually believe that, I do believe that I am a creative as a whole. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that it is who I am. Mm -hmm. It embodies me. Um, I do think that as a creative, there is a time and a place for when I can create. Mm -hmm. So I don't always create. Um, but yes, I am a creative. Yes, I do create. And how do I prioritize that? It's hard. The reason why it's hard, especially in 
being an independent artist or yeah. even in being in a go-go band, mm-hmm. um, sometimes you don't have the resources that you need in order to create successfully. So a lot of times it can be very frustrating because society doesn't even want you to prioritize the creative part mm-hmm. of you. They want you to um, fit in, I guess, you know, yeah. go the traditional route. Okay, yeah. get a job, go to school, do this, do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it can be very hard because right now I'm in school, I have a job, I'm also doing music. Um, and so it's very hard to pick what I want to prioritize. Not necessarily what I want to prioritize, but it's hard when you have a lot of voices just echoing, oh, go here, go there, do this, do that. Um, So it can be very difficult. I try my best to um, prioritize self. So I start with myself first. Mm -hmm. What what is the most urgent for me at the moment and what is the most important to me at the moment? Um, so music yeah. may be important, whereas my job may be important because I'm an educator. So sometimes mm-hmm. my students come before my work or my art. Um, you know, sometimes family comes before my students. Sometimes yeah. family be- comes before my art. Um, so it's just, it's very difficult, but mm-hmm. it is a day-by-day, step-by-step thing. Um, and. Yeah. It's never going to be perfect. So I'm not aiming for perfection. I'm just aiming for something that works for me. Yeah. Wow. You you brought up so many things that I'm curious about. I have to, like, prioritize in my own space which one I want to talk about first. But, you know, I, I guess one of the things you brought up was this idea that as you're growing up, I think most creatives experience, maybe not most, but I think most, experience some form of pushback about having their expression be mm. their creativity right. right you're be a starving artist right there's this 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 stigma. concept <laughs> yeah that that people in your community out of love and support for you and wanting but not understanding mm. may say you can't make a living at this this is not and yet so there's like a stifling to creativity that mm. happens i think sometime around adolescence mm. do you feel like how do you feel like you were able to push that off it's, or incorporate it, maybe. I don't know. It's hard. I'm still pushing it off to this day. <laughs> <laughs> um, because my mother is a prominent figure in D.C. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people know my mother for the work that she does in her community, yeah. just for the leader and the strong woman that she is. Okay. And so sometimes it's very hard because I feel like I want to... Um, I feel like I want to make her proud Mm -hmm. and kind of follow in her footsteps of being the leader, being a strong woman, being a powerful presence in her community, Mm -hmm. you know, just being completely selfless, Mm -hmm. you know. But it's also hard because my mother has dreams for me that sometimes I don't have for myself. Right. Um, And so there were there was a lot of pushback more so from my mom Mm -hmm. because at one point I actually did drop out of school. I was like, I'm done with school. I'm never doing this again. I'm focusing on music. Everybody else was like, okay, if that's what you're going to do, go for it. And she was just like, well, you could do both. Well, I feel like you should do this. I feel like you should do that. And so it's very hard because my mother is successful. And so I look mm-hmm. at her as um, a, a path that it, that I'm able to take. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes it's just very difficult because I do want to make her proud. But yeah. I, I also want to stick to what I want to do. Um, yeah. And so that that's just the thing. Some, yeah. you know, some, And not even just my mother. Also, other people in my village, they'll be yeah. like, well, what do you, how do you feel about school? You want to do school? And so it's always like, okay, just all, maybe school is the best. Maybe you should put music on pause. And then some days I'll be like, no, 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 don't put music on pause. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but it's very trying. It's very difficult. Um, but I think that's just with life, you know? Yeah. Just, I, I am I am in control of the life that I live, and mm-hmm. so I just have to constantly yeah, remind yeah. myself that it's not I'm not living life for my mom. I'm not living mm-hmm. life for my mentors. I'm not living life for my students. I'm living life for Jata, and yeah. I should do whatever I want to do, whatever makes me feel the best or whatever I feel is best for myself on this journey that we call life. So, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. There, there is a totally non-clinical term that my siblings and I have. Mm-hmm 
coined mm -hmm. for parents that is called aggressively supportive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, when parents are like coming from a place of love and mm. people in our community are coming from a place of love, mm. but they're like, you can do more things, bigger right, things. Right. <laughs> Go bigger. Go bigger. <laughs> and, and I'm like, my dream is just as big. Right. It's just my dream. Right. And so it's hard to balance that acceptance of the love that they're showing mm. with the aggressive supportiveness that they're showing. It's like, right. be supportive without the aggression. Right, right, maybe. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me be aggressive on my, be my own behalf. Right. I'm, I'm still <laughs> as aggressive. You can be as aggressive, but just, guys, tone it down. <laughs> like Absolutely. That. Uh -huh. So how do you feel like, you know, as a go-go artist <clears throat> in this city, it's like the home of the home of go-go. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of pressures on you and there's kind of positives and to the to working in the community and then like challenges to working in the community mm -hmm. how do you navigate your kind of emotional health in the mm -hmm. midst of all that so you take a deep breath okay <laughs> literally like that i'm um, leaning in uh, yes i actually have a friend a good friend of mine uh -huh. um we have been getting into journaling mm -hmm. and we do like, I want to say self-care talks. Yeah. He'll, he'll just tell me, like, hey, what are you doing? Pull up. And let's talk about it. Let's yeah. let's figure it out. And I, I'll call him to vent, but he'll, he will keep me um, focused. Mm -hmm. he'll, he'll hit me up and he'll say, Jatal, did you write in your journal today? Mm -hmm. If you're feeling some type of way, let's talk about it. Why do you mm -hmm. feel like this? Why do you feel like that? Um, so I think for me, the best thing has been journaling mm -hmm. because not only does it allow me to see my emotions outright, like right there in my face, but it yeah. also assists me in trying to create a solution if I am able to create one mm -hmm. for any problem that I have. And yeah. with GoGo -Go and being in the community so much, yeah. there are a lot of different problems that pop up in the GoGo -Go community. Mm -hmm. And so at times it's, it's very frustrating. Um, and so, you know, as a creative who mm -hmm. is also a brand, because I'm Jatal Freeman the person, I'm Jatal yeah. Freeman the sister, I'm Jatal Freeman the child, I'm Jatal Freeman the student, I'm Jatal right. Freeman the artist. But as, well, I'm not Jatal Freeman the artist, I'm Jatal the artist. Yeah. But as the brand, Jatal the artist, there are certain things that I can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. And there are certain ways that I can and cannot react to actions that have been taken Right. upon me or actions that are going on around me. Yeah. So I have decided that, you know, for me, mm -hmm. I'm going to journal first. Second, I try to find ways to um, release energy. So for yeah. me, I'm an athlete. Um, I played lacrosse my whole entire life. Very cool. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, um, I... I go to the gym to release mm -hmm. stress. Um, I'll go to a spa. I'll go on a hike. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just go for a walk around the neighborhood. Or what I've recently been doing is tapping into things that made me happy as a child that oh, I cool. yeah didn't necessarily get to do because, you know, the regular hustle and bustle of life. Yeah. But the things that I can do now that, you know, I can take care of myself and I can drive myself or I can pay mm -hmm. for myself yeah. so now I'm just tapping more into things that make me make my inner child happy so for example if I'm feeling bad or down I'm I'm going to go get ice cream because <laughs> nobody can tell me that I can't get ice cream today right. so I'm going to go get ice cream because I'm an adult and I can do that or mm -hmm. I'll go get cookies or um I'll go to the playground with my little brother and I'll just swing, you know. And so mm -hmm. things that used to make me happy as a child, I'll just re, I'll get in touch with those again. Um, yeah. Revisit those. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Because there was a sense of peace and happiness for me at that time mm -hmm. that I didn't have because, well, that I don't have now because right. when I was a child, I didn't have any responsibilities. I didn't have a care yeah. in the world. Now I have responsibilities and I have cares yeah. in the world. Yeah. And so I just try to tap back into those moments where I didn't have to think about the hustle and bustle of life, yeah. <laughs> so to speak. Jata, I, I, I love what you're saying because, mm. it, first of all, it fits. I'm kind of a nerd. I'm a neuroscience nerd. Okay. Um, because I, cause my field. Uh. But um, I, everything that you're talking about is stuff that I feel like human beings as we try to improve and manage our lives and, mm -hmm. and seek that kind of p place of peace and happiness and at different points we discover these things like 
moving our bodies is helpful. Right. Getting out and and hiking, exercising. Lately, weight training is what I'm into. Okay. Because um, that's like really important. <laughs> yes. Um, and and also what you were talking about about journaling. There actually has recently been some neuroscientific evidence that the connection of writing words out. With, instead of just talking about them or saying mm-hmm. them, writing them out and having to take that time mm-hmm. actually helps your brain make meaning out of your day-to-day life better really? and more efficiently. Okay. So journaling is like a really powerful tool wow. for helping your brain kind of make sense of your experience. Okay. So, I love that. And and I'm a play therapist, so I'm 100% behind. <laughs> I love what you're talking about. <laughs> so I may know a little something. <laughs> yeah. You're like an amateur therapist here cool, for cool. yourself. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so one of the interesting things is that about like working and um, you, that you said earlier it, about being a creative is that it is your identity, right? Mm-hmm. It is who you are and it flows through every aspect of yourself mm-hmm. and you kind of have to find a way to navigate prioritizing um how much of that is kind of being present in the moment. You talked about different identities, mm. different different, really just environments in which you have to kind of shift from moment to moment from mm. what am I prioritizing. And, mm-hmm. and I love that because I'm a firm believer that life is about prioritizing, not about finding balance. Mm. Because balance is a state of constant stress. Every muscle in your body is tensed <laughs> when you're balanced. Right. Do people and so, know that? I don't think people know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, I always imagine someone on a teeter-totter. Do you know what that is? Yes. Old school. Yes. Yeah. And when you are in the middle and mm. you are balanced, your muscles are all perfectly tensed, right? Wow. Because if you tense one, you're going to tip in Slightly, either direction right. right, and lose your balance. So mm. I think balance isn't necessarily a relaxed state. Mm-hmm. But I think this idea of having um, a body budget which is a concept that I've talked about before on some Care for Creatives talks. Mm -hmm. Um, A body budget is what I feel like you're describing, Mm -hmm. this idea that you have um, a certain amount of energy to put into something on on a given day, Mm -hmm. and you are budgeting throughout the day how much you are putting into these different things. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you're really finding a positive way of doing that. Do you find that that positive kind of environment you've created for yourself impacts your creative outlet? Like, do you feel like it helps you be more creative and engage more when you're prioritizing that Mm -hmm. part? Um, I think absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not even, I think, I know that (laughs) that is exactly what happens. And it's because when I am in a better space, Mm -hmm. mind, body, and soul, I perform better. I create more. Mm -hmm. Um, when When all my needs are met, Mm-hmm. Um, then I, my energy is higher. So mm-hmm. I, I just perform better. I create more. Um, and so with one of my bands that I play with, well, the band, my main band that I play with, uh-huh. um, the Experience Band and Show, we, every time we perform, we say that we thrive off energy because mm-hmm. our band is also known as the People's Band. Yes. Oh, yeah. And so we thrive off the energy of the people, mm-hmm. um, of the people that we perform in front of, you know. And mm-hmm. a lot of times if I'm performing and the crowd's energy is off, mm-hmm. it's going to throw me off. And it may it may not even, it's not, it's not going to stop me from performing. Mm-hmm. It definitely kind of puts a halt in my mind. It's like, okay, am I doing right? Am I doing wrong? Mm-hmm. So I would say... Even like that example, if the crowd's energy is up, our energy is going to be up. But if yeah. the crowd's energy is down, our energy is going to be, it's going to be like that tear talker, kind of like, okay, what are yeah. we doing? We're trying to figure it out. Um, but I will say even in my personal life, that's what it is. If my energy is up, everything else around me is up. Everybody mm-hmm. else around me is up. Um, mm-hmm. When my energy is down, everything around me is down. My productivity is down. All the people around me, their energy goes down. So... Yeah, when I'm when I tap in and prioritize self and uh, spiritual wellness um, mm-hmm. and health, then everything around me blossoms. But when I don't, yeah, it, it withers. <laughs> <laughs> it withers. <laughs> yeah, I think for creatives, that what you're describing is so important. Mm-hmm. That finding that ability to really tap into 
the energy around you too, the mm. energy within you and the energy around you mm. to allow that creativity to flow. Mm. And when it's blocked, it can feel, have you, have you ever, I was almost going to describe your experience, but I want you to describe your okay. experience. Have you ever been in a space where you felt like that creativity was blocked? Yes. Where you were struggling to really tap into? Oh my goodness. Yes. So for me, um, like I said, I thrive off of energy. I've been in studio sessions as an mm -hmm. R&B artist yeah. with certain people, couldn't come up with anything. And it was because I felt the energy in the studio was off. Mm -hmm. um, there have also been times, I've recently actually, I've mm -hmm. been stuck in like a rut, um, like a creative writing block. Okay. Yes, because when it comes to like my own personal music, it's very hard for me to sit down like in re in more recent times, it's been harder for me to sit down and really write out lyrics or write out songs. And mm -hmm. I've just been in this creative rut because I've been focusing on go go and work and life mm -hmm. um, and just that, like you said, that body budget. I've been giving more of my budget out to <laughs> everybody else, but just all the R and B artists. Yeah. And so I've kind of been stuck. Um, now I feel like. I've been doing better because, like I said, journaling has helped me mm -hmm. a lot more. Um, and literally last night I created a, a song just out the blue with my band. So I feel like I'm awesome. no longer there, but it is trying because it's so mm -hmm. easy to get stuck in that rut, especially, you yeah. know, with everything that goes on in life. You know, we're still in a pandemic. That's one thing. Also, yeah. me being an educator, a lot of times I take on the emotions um, and the traumas of my students. Mm -hmm. So that can put me in like a, a rut as well. Um, mm -hmm. But like I said earlier, day by day, um, step by step, you know, working, mm -hmm. but just remembering to just try to get back to mm -hmm. um, self, I guess. Try to yeah. get back into that creative vibe that I yeah. usually am in. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's it's making me think of something that I've kind of been really um, digging into lately, which is a sense of agency, mm. people having a sense of agency. Do you feel like when you're in that down space that you have an idea or a belief that you can get yourself out of it? Or do you feel like you've ever gotten to the space where you just felt like you couldn't get out of it? You just, you couldn't see the other side of the hill mm. as an option. Mm. I've been both. It's okay. been both. Okay. Um, <laughs> now, because something my mother says all the time is your perception is your reality, so change your lens. Oh, I like your mom already. Yeah, hello. <laughs> That's a powerful woman right there. <laughs> but so for me, I know now, okay, yes, I am frustrated. Yes, I am stuck in this rut. Yes, I mm -hmm. may be a little depressed in the moment, but this is not the end it's not the end all be all basically right. um there is light at the tunnel there's always gold at the end of the rainbow mm -hmm. right yeah um but i have also been in that space where i felt like oh this is it i'm done you know scratch it scratch yeah. it all um and i would say more so 2020 2021 i was kind of there yeah and i was sense. just stuck for a long time and mm -hmm. and it it would be it wouldn't be like one consistent like length of time, mm -hmm. it would be more so maybe like three months. Okay, I'm good. Then like four months. Then I'm good again. And then it was like five months. You know, maybe not yeah. like that, but it was just like a significant amount of time where I was down, and I mm -hmm. and I just kept going down. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on. What's going on? I don't I don't yeah. know what to do. But I realized when I did change my lens, um, my life started to shift. Mm -hmm. So I also try not to just change my lens, but also change my word, my mm -hmm. wording, sorry, because words hold weight, words have power. Mm -hmm. So if I'm sitting here and I'm like, bro, I'm never, ever, ever going to be great ever. Yeah, I'm not going to be great because I'm yeah. putting that over my life. But if I speak positivity into my life, if I speak life into my life, mm -hmm. then I'll never be stuck, you know? Yeah. Um, and as an example, my little brother is 11. He's in the sixth grade. Awesome. Um, he actually goes to the school that I work at. Uh -huh. Yes. And so I'm teaching him now. He'll he'll be joking. He'll say, man, I'm broke. Can you buy me this? You know I'm broke. Can you buy me that? <laughs> and I'll tell him, Jameer, you're not broke. 
Don't ever say you're broke mm-hmm. because you don't want to put that on your life. You say, right. right now, I'm financially working on it. Or, you know, <laughs> like that. at the moment, my I'm finances, working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> so, um, but yes, it's just it's just as simple as that, like changing your lens and speaking life. And let me not say as simple as that because it's not that easy. It's, right. It took me a while. Um, but when I did shift, my whole entire life shifted. Yeah. The opportunity shifted. Um, yeah. The vibration shifted. So, yes. You know, it's so, uh, one of the reasons why I love being a therapist and why I think therapy is so powerful is that what you're describing is you reach that point where you couldn't see the other side. You couldn't shift your perspective in the moment, Mm -hmm. but then you had the capacity to, and you had the community around you Mm -hmm. and the ability to make use of that community, Mm -hmm. which is important to be able to find a new vision, right? Mm-hmm. To find a new perspective, mm-hmm. to look in. I always imagine like looking in a room where we can only see through one window, but if we get someone else's perspective who's looking through another window, mm. we suddenly see a fuller picture. Right. And so I feel like what therapy can do for people is when you're in that space where even your community and your family and the people who love you can't help you find that new perspective, mm-hmm. can't help you find a new outlook, you can go in and see a therapist and that therapist can help you find that. Right. And so I think that's part of why I just wanted to say that because I think it's part of why I think this Care for Creatives um, program is so important, mm-hmm. giving people an opportunity to come in and have someone without having to pay a bunch of money. You can just right. come in and have someone to offer you that just that little shift that you were just talking about mm-hmm. that gets them around the mountain, gets them over the hill. Mm-hmm. Um, because a saying that I love is whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. That's good. I'm still in it. Yeah, <laughs> you, please do. Take it. <laughs> I don't think I invented it. But okay. it's it's such a powerful idea. Mm. It's kind of what your mom was saying, what mm. you're saying. It's like if you believe you can, you're right. If you mm. believe you can't, you're, you're right. right. Mm. So um, my mom used to say, this too shall pass. That's yes. what she would say. Absolutely. This too shall pass. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> always. It always will. So, yes, I love that. <laughs> Well, so I have to say, this has just been so much fun, Jita. Yes. I've had so much fun talking to you today. Thank you. And I'm wondering if you could just kind of, in our last few minutes here, mm-hmm. tell people um, maybe what's been going on in, in the GoGo community around D.C. lately. <laughs> um, maybe get, get people a little mm-hmm. excited about coming out to see a GoGo show. Yes. Or? So you all can follow me on Instagram at Just Jita. It is J-U-S-T-J-T-A. My Twitter, don't really use it, but it's at Just Jita underscore J-U-S-T-J-T-A underscore. You can find more music from The Experience Band and Show on all streaming platforms. You can also find me doing music with Critical Condition Band, also known as CCB, on all streaming platforms. Um... Yes, make sure you tune in to 95.5, 96.3, 102.3, 93.9. They play songs with CCB and myself all the time. So if you ever hear me riding down the street, please let me know. Um, Also, I have music coming out myself, so that's super exciting, just trying to get the feels out. Um, But yes, I just thank God for all the opportunities. Um, I just, I'm so excited for what GoGo is doing. and I feel like GoGo is shifting out more because I feel mm-hmm. like at first it was more so a, of a East Coast thing. Um, mm-hmm. But I feel like now it's pushing out into um, not just the country, but also the world. So hopefully mm-hmm. we take it internationally. Um, but yes. Thank you so much for having me. I I had so much fun. (laughs) Awesome. I'm excited to look into some of the more, some of the go-go music you're doing and and, um, listen to some of your music. That'll be really exciting. Thank you. Maybe even come see an event. Come on. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much to for being here today. And thank you for joining us on this Care for Creatives community conversation brought to you by the Creative Affairs Office and DC Mayor Muriel Bowser. If you would like more information about the Care for Creatives program and Pay What You Can Therapy, you can find that at creativeaffairsdc.com. Thank you.